Welcome preachers. Can we be standing in the name of Jesus as you welcome Mama in the name of Jesus? This is the grace of God that we have this afternoon and we say welcome so much. Uh, Mama, we love you so much. Amen. Return, say something and then you shall invite the preacher this afternoon. Thank you. You may be seated in his presence. To the leadership of this great school and all the schools which are represented here all the ministers of the gospel who are here, invited guests, all protocols observed. Yeshua Mashiach, that is Jesus Christ, his Hebrew name, Asifiwe Sana. What a privilege to be here on this day. The seventh day of the month of July, which is supposed to be Saba Saba, historically for chaos, but today for revival. But for today, for revival. For today, for revival. I gave my life to Jesus Christ at the age of five. That is 65 years ago. So you can ensemble how old I am now. Hallelujah. But it was in an Anglican church. And uh, there are a lot of things which I didn't know. All I knew is that uh, uh, when I was in high school, when they go for cow dance, it was a girls' school. I was not going. When they go for movies, we go to read the Bible. Until I became bored with Christianity. I said, there must be something interesting with Christianity. Is this how I'm going to live my life? I was just now 15, 16 there, asking questions. And so as I was asking questions, we decided to read the Bible again. There must be something deeper in Christianity than being saved and repenting your sins every day and wearing long clothes uh, for sanctification and uh, not watching movies, trying to be good. Even in school, we are the best. Amen. So with my friends, with my three friends, we started to seek God, and as we read the Book of Acts, we stumbled on the Holy Spirit. We said, "This is the answer. We have never heard of the Holy Spirit." Thank God, most of you have heard of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have not heard about the Holy Spirit? Ah, thank God. But for in my time, we have not heard about the Holy Spirit. So we say, started hungering for that Holy Spirit. We said, oh, they got Holy Spirit when they're in the, in the upper room. So in our chapel, we had a gallery. So at night after prep time, we'd run to the gallery and uh, pray. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. But uh, one day we were caught by the teacher who was on duty. In, she marched us straight to the headmistress. I found these girls, I don't know what they were doing in chapel, but they said they were praying for Holy Spirit. Now imagine this was a missionary school, which nine, 29 of our teachers, all of them, were white people, white missionaries. So they said, what are you praying for? We said, the Holy Spirit. They said, let's tell you, we are missionaries. There's nothing more. There's nothing more. Unless you give your life to Christ and you go to a foreign country and you serve God, that's what you need to do. We said, we are going where? Anyway, tell us, we never to go. Don't do it again. And if you do, I will, we are going to throw you out of the school. However, we decided our, uh, our hunger for God was too much. So we went under the tree when the others are going for lunch. We go under the tree and we ask God, fill us with this Holy Spirit. He changed the 
exchange your disciples. Men who had feared and had run away and had denied Jesus, but at the end they were ready to die for him. What is that power which could change your life? This is what we want. And for sure, God filled us with his power and of the Holy Spirit. My school, clap for the Lord, please. Clap for the Lord. We had 500 students. And for three days, nearly actually a week, school classes were suspended. The power of the Holy Spirit visited our campus. Students were crying out for God. And overnight, we became preachers. I graduated from high school and I went to my, by the way, I'm a Ugandan by birth, but now I am on Kamba by marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. So eventually I landed in Makerere University where I thought that uh, the peak of everything of life is to be at Makerere High School. The ivory tower, the place where everybody coveted to be. But when I arrived there, I found it was vanity of vanities. In that time, it was under Idi Amin, if you have ever heard of him, me and met him face to face several times. He sent his soldiers who came and disciplined us at Makerere University. We were beaten, others were killed. I survived. By the time they were through with me, I was coughing blood. But as I looked at the soldiers who didn't know English and they actually they knew Swahili, and one I said, "What chani kulia? What chakulia?" I said, "What is what chakulia?" We don't know, but we say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." What chakulia? You say we don't know what that means. So you say stop crying. And on that experience. I really I had been saved, I had been filled with the Holy Spirit, but in that experience, on that day, I, did, I met Jesus Christ, my Lord. I gave him my life. From there I said, I don't want to have my life anymore. I want to know why you created me. And I don't think that this is the end. I have not done so much for you and I'm dying. At that time they are going to take us to the prisons. And they, are, they were, of course, they were killed and they raped and they, whatever. When I, you, you, you landed there, there was no law. There was no lawyers to come for you. There was no man, a man not to come for you. You are a dead person. So I asked the Lord, is it all? Have I really done anything? If you could just give me a chance, another chance to live, I'll live for you. I made that covenant with the Lord. So from that time, I, I lost interest in the things of this world. They became vanity. I left school. I left university. And I started becoming a lay preacher. Going in buses and what my... My parents found me there and said, go back to university. I said, I nearly died there. I nearly went to eternity. What was I going to tell God? What have I done? They said, okay, I said, okay, it's no good not to obey your parents. I'm going back. But I'm in university, but I'm not there. So I go for the lectures and I say, as once I'm out, I'm out in preaching. And preaching that for lost souls. And to make the long story short, I graduated there. From there, I want to thank God that the Lord will never shame you when you trust in Him. Amen. I graduated with second class honors. One of the three in our department who are able to get it. I gave God all the glory, but I also put that aside. I said, now I'm going to seek you for why you created me. I didn't, have, I didn't want to waste time doing other things and running around with the success values which have been put. That once you think you get a degree, you get a job, you get a husband, you get children, a good house and a good car. I said, I'm not going to chase that dream. I'm not. I want to chase and to know that I'm doing your will. There must be a purpose. I want to tell you young people, 
that success is not in the material things. It is not in the abundance of things of this world. You must put the values of this world aside because they are temporary. There is an eternity. By the way, as I got saved at, five, at the age of five years, God showed me hell. So I feared to go to hell. Up to today, I still have that on my, in my spirit. So as I sit down, I want to challenge you to live a life which is for the Lord. I am a testimony for you young ladies that from that time I got saved from the age of five, even before that actually I was saved because my parents were all born again and my grandparents. So I don't remember saying I'm not born again. But when I saw hell, that's when I asked my, my mother to lead me to Christ. But one thing I want to tell you, as young ladies, what will bring you down is a man. And you men, what will bring you down will be a woman. So stay away until the Lord finds you a good thing. There's no time to experiment having boyfriends and having your soul ties with different John, Paul, what, what. Don't experiment. The Lord will bring you your husband at the right time. And he did for me. Amen. And even with my husband, we never dated. He saw me one day, second day, he proposed a week, a month later. When I had gone away, I came back to marry him. Because the world had come for Hello. I wanna say my enjoy your mama and I've never smoked, I've never tasted even alcohol. This body of mine has not taken alcohol. Amen. So I'm a testimony of that you can read a life just life for 65 years with purity, which the Lord is demanding, demanding. Because there is an end time revival which your generation must carry. Your theme is uh, uh, rise and shine, is it? As I rise and shine, answer the call. There is a call for you. The call for Kenya is to lead a great revival, not a great rebellion. Not a great revolution, but a revival. A people full of God and for the purposes and the plan of God. Kenya is written in the word of God and has its plan. And God has its plan for you. As you have been challenged by many pastors who have come here, arise, this is the word of God for you. If you have heard this word, God loves you. And therefore, he has a plan for you. There is an assignment for you. It is for you to find that assignment and do it. Don't move around because of your friends. And you do things because you are influenced by your friends or demanded of by your parents. But live a life with Christ that he died for you. That you may live eternal life and life abundantly. Today, the Lord has blessed me if I want to start talking about I won't even have time to talk about the blessing. The Lord will still bless you. I am a mother of eight. And a grandmother of 20. Spirit. Paul, what did you 
because I told him, do not let down anybody despise your youth. He was a young bishop. Don't despise his youth. By the way, he's also a father. And a father of five. He's already taken. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And all my sons are gone, but I've got a daughter. <laughs> and he's available. If you see me privately. But you are too young. Thank you. <laughs> now help me to put your hands together as we welcome. Bishop John Charles Muyu, the second to come and minister the word of truth with power, with anointing, which is only from above. May the Lord touch each and every heart. May the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord open your ears to hear what the Lord is saying. to give a shout of victory unto the Lord. You are still standing, standing some of you. Come and give a shout of victory. for inviting us to be here today. I came with a big team that has answered the call. We are a pra practical. They are practicals and they still are. They are, as Lord has been saying, and it may be just theory. If you do not put it into action, and it becomes practical, I'm a living example of the one who has answered the call. Bless you and let us answer the call. Hallelujah. 
Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. I'm James Munyasia, miokoka Yesu ni Bwana. Ah, uh, Isabel Zanelda. Ah, uh, he is my senior pastor. I work under him as I answer the call of serving the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Bwana asifiwe tena. Kwa majina ni Daniel Masinde. I serve as a deacon in Gospel Tabernacle Worship Center. Bishop is our senior pastor. If you are youth, he was our youth pastor. Very cute, Sana. Amen. 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 He's called Prince Charles. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm called Elky Man. I'm a shiriki under Bishop John Chasmuel and my presiding bishop. Amen. Amen. You have answered the call. Amen. What has he feel? Amen. My name is Daniel Muema, under Bishop John Chasmuel, a leader, a youth leader, and I'm blessed to be here today. Amen. Wanjiru, I'm born again. Um, I've answered the call. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I serve under the presiding bishop of our church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Have you answered your call? Have you answered the call? Yes. I have answered the call. Uh, my name is Purit Jeremy. I'm, I'm a born again. I serve under Bishop Charles Mayu and our presiding bishop. God bless you. Amen. 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 And last but not least, do we look alike? Last but not least, you can see him. Look at. Uh, look at that Do we look alike? Last but not least, he's, uh, he's going to tell his name. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God once more. My name is Jed Charles Moon. This is my son. He's Joel Charles Moon. Joel Charles Moon, the third. I'm the second. And he's the third. Amen. So he's a man. He's number two. And uh, I have, he has three sisters behind him, making five children. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. I have answered the what? I have answered the call. Let's pray briefly. Father, we thank you once again. As we enter into your world, the entrance of your world, bring it light to the simple Lord. Let it convert every soul. I pray that what will be deposited, let it fall into good ground and let it bring forth fruit to the glory and honor of your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and believe. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. KSCF, you're doing a wonderful job with the chair in absentia. Brother Emmanuel and also Pastor Silas, you're doing a wonderful job to the, for the Lord. I want to go to the Word of God. I have to read first. The theme is in Jonah. Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. Now I would like to read from verse 1. Jonah is a minor prophet. This minor prophet uh, is one of the interesting prophets that I I would say I've, I've learned a lot of lessons from this prophet Jonah. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Verse 3 says, So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh 
according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. Now Jonah was a prophet. He had the word of God. And when he had the word of God, he did not react to it immediately. This was the second time that he was hearing the word of God. The first time he was hearing the word of God is in Jonah chapter 1. And in Jonah chapter 1, when God called Jonah and told him, go to the city of Nineveh, Jonah did not answer immediately. Jonah did the opposite. I pray that you will not do the opposite. When God called Jonah, the first time, he entered into a boat that was going down to Tarshish, and he went in the opposite direction. You can hear the call and do the opposite thing. And this afternoon, I want to share with us four things that are needed for us. And I want to give them for us to be effectively to answer the call. There are four things that you have to bypass. I will call them four deaths. Four deaths. I want to talk about four deaths. When we talk about death, it's not something pleasurable. I want to ask by asking you a question. How many have ever slaughtered a kitchen, a chicken? No, no, not a kitchen, a chicken. How many have ever slaughtered a chicken? Ah, I want to see your hand up very well. Those that are raising hands have ever caused death to a chicken. How many you are here and you have ever killed a sheep? Put your hands up. If you have ever killed a sheep, put your hands up. The hands are becoming, are becoming few. The hands are becoming few. How many have ever slaughtered a goat? A goat, a goat, a goat. I want to see your hands up, the hands up, oh, the men who have slaughtered goats. Yeah. How many here have ever slaughtered a cow? Ah, you have never slaughtered a goat. How did you slaughter a cow? That is bigger than a goat. How did you slaughter it? Now this one is the jackpot. Before you can live for 
have already given your life to the Lord. Is that true? Yes. Three quarters. But how many have died here? I don't come for those who have already got born again. We have come so that we can let you know that if you got born again and you did die, you have to die now again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What does it mean that you have to die? The first death you have to die is I will call it the die to self. You have to die to self. That's the first death. You have to die to self. What is self? Self is your vision. Self is your goals. Self is your wants. Self is your desires. It was not easy for me. I remember, that's why I've told you, I'm a living example. I think I'm one of the youngest bishops alive. How did I get to be? I had to die. I answered the call at the age of 21. I became a pastor at the age of 21. How many here would want to be a pastor? Let me see your hands up. To the flesh, 
Now the Bible tells us there are several scriptures that I want us uh, uh, to go through in the book of Genesis, and uh, not, not Genesis, Galatians. The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. So their eyes already dead. So it is not you who is living. And because you are dead to self, he says now, it says now, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Another question I want to ask you, how many have ever fasted in this fasting is without water. How many has ever uh, you have ever gone three days without water and no food? Fasting. I don't see any hand. I see only one hand. Three days without water and without food. Three days. How many have ever gone seven days? Seven days without water and without food when you grow up say when I grow up I will go seven days <laughs> without water and without food and you would die and not shakahola I'm not talking about shakahola fasting is the crucifixion that God has, taught, has, has put in place to deal with the flesh you, for you to serve and answer the call, for you to answer the call, you have to bring your body under subjection. Then you have to fast. Because uh, fasting is what God has put, and these ones are my lighting. Because many things to answer the call is to walk around and say, I'm born again. That is what many things to say. I'm walking around saying, I'm born again. There is even fasting, and fasting deals with the flesh. Many don't like it, but as you grow up, God to give you understanding and knowledge how to seek in, in the face of God through prayers and fasting. Now when we talk about fasting, do not ignorantly engage yourself in what I'm talking about. You can easily die for good. These ones we are talking about are spiritual. It is a spiritual death that is happening inside but affecting your physical body. So fasting God has chosen, that is the second death that God has chosen so that you can be able to do the will of God. All these things I'm talking about we see them in the life of Jonah from our text where we have read. Jonah was fighting with God because of his own will. God is saying go down to Nineveh and his will is to go to Tarshish. So that fight of the will of Jonah was fighting with the will of God. We see Jonah again after he disobeyed the call of God, he entered, he was thrown out of the boat, he caused people a lot of trouble and when Jonah entered into the water, he was swallowed by a big fish. That fish kept Jonah for three days in the belly, inside the belly, before the word of God came to him the second time. Before Jonah could obey the word of God, he had to fast. Because the first time he was eating, and when he was eating, he could not do the will of God. Some things you cannot do until you deny yourself food and you take up the cross and follow God. Hallelujah! We are on which death? We are on the third death. The third death is very important. I want to concentrate some more about this third death. This third death is the death of this world. 
There's a account given in the word of God about a man called Demas. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, this man here called uh, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and the Bible says 2 Timothy the Bible talks here about a man here who was serving the Bible says here this is a uh, second Timothy we're in chapter 4 and the Bible talks here let me read from verse 12 second Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 says and teach us have I sent to Ephesus and verse 13 says and uh, Verse, verse, verse 10, oh, verse 10. For Demas, yes, he is the man Demas. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. The word of God talks about a man called Demas. I'm a living example, I said, who have answered the call. I can remember when I answered the call. This morning I was teaching about baptism. Baptism. And one of the things that I realized, and I was testifying to the class, and I was saying, when you enter ministry, or when you begin to walk with God, it is not easy as many people think. It is not going to be easy. There was the, this temptation for the world. The temptation for the world. I remember when I started ministry. That was uh, a while ago as a pastor. I used to receive an allowance of 1,000 shillings. 1,000 shillings. And I was there. And I have my brother who is elder. My brother told me, ah. You're getting 1,000 shillings. He said, no, 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 no. This one, no. <laughs> he said, me, I cannot get one. He refused. He said, no, this one, no. But I had to, you have to persevere. Because you're going to ask yourself, when, when time comes and you get old and you get out of school, and you go out, you will be tested with the things of this world. And one of them is money. And I was given a job. Well, we went somewhere, and when we went to visit, he's a uh, very well-known person in government, and he said, and look, I see this, uh, you son of yours, look that he's capable. And I was to choose between getting an allowance of 1,000 shillings and getting an office job of 60,000 Kenya shillings. Which one should I choose? And we 60,000. <laughs> But you can forsake the call when you love the present things of this world. And the book of, when we read in John, I want to read some of the things that I, John captures them. This is 1st John, the letter of John, 1st John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For you to answer the call, if you love the things of this world, you cannot be effective. You cannot serve God effectively. If you love money, if you love clothes, if you love the things of this world. If you love the things of this world, you are not able, you are not able to be effective. Now, I've been given an urgent, uh, uh, there's an announcement that wants to be made here, <laughs> that if you love the things of this world, what are the things of this world that you have to die to? If you don't die to the things of this world, you cannot serve the Lord. Now, let me ask you, recently, 
I didn't come here with my wife today. I left her. We left her back at the church. And, if you, and my wife was tempted. Last year in January, one person asked her, uh, will you uh, allow me to have a relationship with you? And they know that my wife is married to me. And I'm ready to give you a, a is it a hundred million donations for one night? Galatians 
Colossians chapter 6. These are the works of the flesh. Galatians uh, chapter 6 warns us here about these works of the flesh. Galatians, first it says in verse 7, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8 says, For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And the works of the flesh in the previous chapter, Galatians chapter 5, this it says now here in verse 20, verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. When we talk of idolatry, I want to give my testimony. I was in school, and when I was in high school, I was a very good footballer. I was a striker. Do we have any footballers here in the house? Do we have any footballers? I was a good striker, number nine. Number nine. And my football team that I was supporting was Manchester United. We have some massive fans over here. Nuns. 
girls, the girls who don't want to get married. How many here want to be nuns who don't want to get married? How many here men who want to be eunuchs? Do we have men who want to be eunuchs? You answer the call. You don't want to get married. You are a man here, you don't want to get married. No one is putting up their hands. <laughs> Was, uh, growing up, when I entered the ministry, I went and I told my father, he was alive that time, I don't want to get married. I want to be a eunuch for the Lord. If there's anyone here to be a eunuch for the Lord, anyone who wants to be a eunuch for the Lord, do you know what he told me? He told me, stop foolishness. He told me stop what? <laughs> Why did he tell me to stop foolishness? Why? Because you have a flesh, you have a body. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live what? In a body. You live in a body. So you have to know how to take care of your body. Witchcraft, when we strength, witchcraft, hatred, violence, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And the last thing that you have to die to, you have to die to the kingdom of darkness. The fourth death, you have to die to the works of darkness. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of your dear son? One of the things you have to know, each one of you, for you to answer the call. You can't just answer the call that way. You don't answer the call and bring the things that are in the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of God. You die to the works of darkness. And you have to be totally delivered from the works of darkness. One, some time back, we were in the church. And one of the youth just came and confessed and said, I listen, my favorite station I listen to is Classic FM. When we are talking about music, if you have answered the call, you die. One, like this song, Zakikamba, is that a song by Ken Romani. When you get born again, when you come to the kingdom of God, the Bible says you have been translated. Another scripture tells us in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10 tells us, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You have to prove what is acceptable to the Lord. And when you prove what is acceptable to the Lord, verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. When you answer the call, it is going to be a testing time. If there is one thing I 
the making. And they say this is a fool in the making. I had to now dissociate myself. I had to have no fellowship. Then they want to go this way, and I want to go this way with the Lord. So when you want to walk and answer the call, if you are not ready to die, you cannot serve the Lord effectively. And so I do that. And verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And these unfruitful works of darkness, the Bible tells us, but rather reprove them. This is why Jonah had to arise, and the word of God came to him the second time, and the word of God came to him telling him that you have. And the Bible, the word of God came to Jonah telling him, you have to arise and go to Nineveh, that great city that had over 60,000 people, and ask them that they need to answer the call, repent from their wickedness, turn from their evil ways, and live for the Lord. Hallelujah. How many here are able to fulfill those four deaths? How many here? You have heard them very well, and you can lift up your hands, and you can say, I am ready to fulfill the, the four deaths. The first one, you have to die to yourself. You have to die to yourself. The second death, you have to die to your flesh. The third one, you have to die to the worldly system. And the fourth one, you have to die to all unfruitful works of darkness. Father, we thank you. As they raise up their hands, we thank you that Lord, you have spoken to us to answer the call. We thank you for the, 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 the youth of our generation. The powers of darkness want them not to answer the call. But I pray that Lord you speak to this youth. You speak to these young men. That as they grow up God Almighty. They will be able to fulfill your will and your desire in their lives. We give you the praise. We give you all the glory and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. We do pray and believe. Amen. The psalmist says. I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I am young and I'm still young and I'm enjoying the, the answer of the call in my life. I am a testimony of what God can do. Amen. I'm John Charles Moyo. You can follow us on Gospel Tabernacle Worship Center. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. You can get to know more about us as you, and we are located is, in the headquarters is in South B, Nairobi. And we have branches all over Kambulo, Machakos, every, every area around Kenya. God bless you as you go to your respective blessings. Amen.